Where we left off from last episode, I mentioned that Hyper Toolkit over here is a GUI toolkit like GTK or Qt that you can use to write apps. Now today, we will be using it to customize Hyper Launcher as we set it up inside of last video. Now, if I show you what Hyper Launcher looks like after I've customized it, as you can see, this is what it looks like. Ta-da! Now, I've changed the font and I've changed the background color as well as the accent color and a couple of other things, so it looks pretty appetizing, especially when paired with the current theme that we have so far. Now, when it comes to theming using Hyper Toolkit, there is one fatal flaw which I'm going to tell you, okay, as we go through this, and that fatal flaw is related to being able to make custom theme switchers like this one. And if you're already catching on, you might be able to guess what it is, but I will not be spoiling it for you. Make sure to wait until I actually tell you what it is. Now, as for actually customizing this, it's very simple to do so, okay? All that we need to do is just make a config hyper, hyper toolkit dot toolkit. Okay, <laughs> make sure you don't make the same mistake that I did, okay? I started off naming the file as hyper toolkit.conf, and that ended up me, ended up with me almost pulling my tooth out. Uh-huh, right? <laughs> Literally ended up with me almost pulling my tooth out at how stupid I was after I realized it later on. But anyway, make sure that you are naming the file hypertoolkit.conf. Name it properly, and once you open it, you should see a blank file, okay? You should see a blank file and none of this stuff. But anyway, let's get started with actually configuring each of the different options. So we have a bunch of different options here. Most of them are related to the colors that this thing is going to use. And apart from that, we also have a couple of heading sizes, font sizes, icons, font families, and that's pretty much it. All in all, when you use all of these variables in order to customize Hyper Toolkit, this is what you get right over here. Now, if you'll notice, okay, this seems to be very static because I'm not using any variables here. That completely eliminates any chance for me to use any custom theme switcher. So as I just showed you a couple of seconds ago, if I change the theme with this custom theme switcher over here, the theme instantly changes for all of the applications that are currently being used, whether that be my browser or whether that be my terminal or my VS Codium if I have that opened, my text editor. Okay, it's going to change every single time. Now I can use another theme, something like Night Fox, if I were feeling in the mood for something cozy. As you can see here, that's what Night Fox would look like. Maybe even something like Tokyo Night if I wanted to fully turn on the cozy vibes. And maybe even change the wallpaper to something more minimal to give me even of a, an even more cozier vibe. Which, by the way, I teach you exactly how to make inside of the program, which is the first link in the description. So if in case you liked the way that this setup looks and you want to learn how to make it instead of just copying somebody else's dot files, changing a couple of colors, and then hoping that those dot files work for the rest of your life. If you want to learn how to make a setup like this one, be proud of your own creation, and troubleshoot stuff easily in case anything breaks, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description, and check out the program. In fact, let me just show you what it's like. Okay, as you can see over here, we're in the second section of the program called System Reforging, and the entire program is over 10 hours long. 10 hours long of me basically telling you, click this button over here, go to this website, this is what, this is what each, sing, every single part of this script does, here's how you write it by hand, so on and so forth, all those kinds of really minute, detailed instructions that you wouldn't get inside of a GitHub gist or inside of a Reddit post. So, in fact, let me just show you what I mean inside of this theme switchers module. So right inside of here, which is a two hour long module, I discuss exactly what theme switchers are, how you can make one that's custom theme switching based like this one over here, or one that extracts the colors from your wallpaper and uses that to theme your setup. So if you want to learn how to make something like this and get access to this video where I teach you how to code the entire thing yourself with this script over here, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. Now, let's get back to what we are doing over here. Now, as I just mentioned, the fatal flaw, this is the fatal flaw that I was alluding to earlier, okay? The flaw is that you're not going to be able to use any theme switching capability. This is mostly because they haven't enabled the use of variables properly, at least when it comes to changing colors for the variables that we have over here. Maybe that's something that's on their roadmap and something that they'll update later on, but for now, we're only stuck with using either RGB values like this, using hex values, or using just plain old RGB values that are comma separated. Now, let me show you what I'm actually talking about when I say that you're not able to use custom theme switching. So usually, this is the way that I would structure any place where 
I would have custom theme switching enabled, okay? So this is basically the flow of how it works. So if I would source a colors.con file, which in turn sources a colors colors file, which depends on whichever theme that I have currently selected. So if I'm sourcing home slash config, config hyper colors, colors.conf, okay, this is going to be sourced inside of every top level file. Okay, now this colors.conf file in and of itself is going to source a different file depending on whichever theme that I have currently selected from here. So if I choose Tokyo Night, for example, colors.conf is going to contain source, the source line, because it's a hyperline config file, it's going to contain the source line that is including or sourcing the Tokyo Night config file. Okay, now if I show you what that looks like, it will look something like this. Config hyper colors, colors. And here inside of colors.conf, if you were curious, this is exactly what it looks like. So custom Tokyo Night.conf. This is what it's sourcing. Now if I showed you this part, colors custom Tokyo Night.conf. This all these config files, by the way, they all correspond to the different themes that I have here. So if I show you Tokyo Night, this is what it looks like. So BG0, this variable is going to have RGB 1A, 1B26. Now, ordinarily, you'd think that this something like this works. All you have to do is just use BG0, just like you would in your Hyperland config. But the moment that you do that, the Hyper Toolkit or rather Hyper Launcher is going to throw an error at you saying that it's not an integer, which, unless of course, is added as a feature, it's going to remain as not an integer. Now, the weird thing about this is we can actually source different files, but for some reason, we can't yet use the different colors that are in any sourced files. Maybe that's something that the developers over at Hyper Toolkit are going to fix later on. But apart from that, for now, we will have to stick with using the colors that we have manually hard coded into a particular file ourselves. Now, if I show you, this is what it looks like right now. It seems to be pretty bland, and so you're not able to tell the difference, but this theme really goes well with Horizon. That's what it was written for originally. So now, as you can see, the accent color, the blue over here matches this blue. That's it. And of course, we've changed the font family as well, and that is most of, if not all, of the customization, or mainly most of it, that you can do with Hyper Toolkit. Now. There's a couple of different places where you would actually use this thing. One would be to theme Hyper Launcher, as we discussed in the last video. Another would be to theme Hyper Shutdown, which is a shutdown, a graceful shutdown utility, as the devs of the program themselves say. And I will also be making a video on that in the future. So if you want to be notified when that's uploaded, you can go ahead, hit the subscribe button, and you'll be notified when it comes out. And that's pretty much it. There's not much else that we can discuss about Hyper Toolkit. It's just a GUI toolkit, something like GTK or Qt. That's it. Only thing is, it's not as cute as Qt because, come on, it's Qt. Nothing can beat Qt in terms of the name. If you liked the video, you can go ahead, hit like. And if you want to learn how to make a setup like this one without depending on anybody else, and if you want to gain the skills that go into making a setup like this for yourself, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description, and check out the program. If you liked the video, hit like, if you loved it, again, <laughs> and you want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Stay racing. Mwah.